being as independent as long as you can. Okay? Uh, the other aspect is advanced material, things like film LCD that are coming along, and this is really sort of the future trend. It is again along the end of uh, along the line of information. Okay, what's going to happen? Okay, so right now you still see computers that have monitors and so forth. If you guys have seen, well, if you've seen Iron Man, okay, all engineering students see Iron Man as a movie. Those telescreen that is virtual in space. Okay, and you're guiding and moving things with your hands. Most of the movies you see those happening. Okay, those are going to be a reality soon. Okay, within ten years that's going to happen. Okay, your cell phone, you're looking at a monitor that's here, okay? All of that technology, they're going to start where these film LCDs and so forth, where it then leads to information technology, like the wearable internet and wireless <coughs> technology. This is such that your phone and your monitor is going to be in glasses, okay? You won't have a phone anymore. So again, the battery technology is what's driving it, is how to make the battery small enough. Right, right now, you have to carry a battery pack on your back. <laughs> That's sort of ridiculous, but you're capable of doing it. But eventually, the monitor is going to be on your glasses lens, okay? And you put on the glasses, and you hear it from the ear. So now you'll see it. And not only that, the internet's going to be so fast, and wireless is going to be so fast, that you have information where there'll be facial recognition. So I can be looking at him, and he'll tell me information as to who he is, what his age is, Okay? For those of you that are in the dating scene, whether he's dating or single, that's usually the important driving force. Okay? Um, but it is the wearable internet. And sensor fusion, wireless sensors, there's going to be sensors everywhere. Okay? To monitor temperature, to monitor buildings. Right now, mostly what you hear about is these big high rise buildings. If you're not aware, okay, cars, they focus on cars, right? Which is the carbon footprint, 32% uh, of the carbon footprint is, is distributed by cars, but it's tough to fix. The other 30% is actually modern buildings. Buildings are very inefficient, okay? especially in the United States. Most of the time, buildings are cool. And I have some, air, some experience in this area, and it's shocking that I hear that in places like in Austin, okay, they will actually cool the entire building. Okay? Then when winter sort of comes along, which is a very short period, they don't want to turn the air conditioning off or the chiller because they're big chillers. So they'll have cool air, and then what they'll do is they'll have local heaters on the vent, and they reheat the cool air that they're cooling, okay? So it's like these are the things where the future area that comes about in terms of where business opportunities can occur, which is what most of your interest is, is how to revamp all the buildings in terms of new heating system. These are opportunities because the bigger established companies like Johnson Controls, Honeywell, uh, they don't believe in this stuff, they say, right? Then these young companies will come in and they'll sit there, look, just look in downtown San Francisco, okay? How many buildings, how many rooms? Okay, we're talking about sensors in every room, controls in every room, which is sort of my area, so I get a little bit excited anyway. So these are sort of the future technology. I'll now focus sort of on stuff that I work on so that you're a little bit interested and then we'll go into questions that you can ask. Next slide. Okay, mechatronics. Right, if you don't know what the term is, and this is sort of my lecture class, so you guys can feel like what it is to be a student in, uh, in my class. <laughs> okay. So it's a fusion of mechanical electronics, software engineering. It was a term that was coined in 1969, but it's a very popular term now. We never do anything new. We just teach all the old stuff. Next slide. Okay, what does mechatronics mean? Okay, I'm, okay. so I apologize. There might be some milit militaristic theme on all of this thing, but in the US, they're the driving force for the money, so you, you have to present it. <laughs> Autonomous guided vehicles, okay? Um, we use, so we, so we sort of use hobby helicopters, and these are sort of fun. Kids think of them as toys, but sorry, by me saying kids, these are graduate college students. <laughs> They're kids to me now. Um, autonomous vehicle, next slide. Right, and then this, this is sort of a project that we, we were able to work on. Um, this is again, right, you take old vehicles that are manual, Right? And what Megatronics is about is, of course, you automate it, okay? Although there's, you know, humans are sort of nice, the problem is they get tired, <laughs> they can't drive a straight line. Uh, what, this, what this vehicle does is, is cut these things called banana cuts. Uh, for those of you that are here, for those of you that are visiting, and for those of you that are in Indonesia, it's sort of tough to imagine, why would you want to do something like this? And what the banana cuts are is to recess reflectors that are on the freeway. You saw on the freeway, the reflectors are sort of a little bit below the surface, okay? Here, if you drive here, you won't. These are only in places where there's snow, 
Okay. Now in Indonesia, you might want to do it if the volcano erupts a lot and there's a lot of volcano ash. You might want to do the same thing if you plow the volcano ash. But here is the plowing of the snow. So the problem is the plowing the snow, which is an interesting problem. Plowing the snow is every winter the plow, snow plow comes through and they move the snow away. For those of you that, you know, but anyway, it's a lot of snow that they move away and they shoot these snow things off to the side. Right? So the problem is these things get, these reflectors that are on and when you drive the freeway or if you're traveling and you're going to go to the airport, just pay note of this. Right? If it's one thing you want to remember out of this talk is as you're driving to the airport, you go, oh yeah, that's what he's talking about. There's little reflectors on the thing. You'll see these little reflectors that are bumped and if you fall asleep and you cross over, they'll from the car. They'll wake you up. But these in snow, those things, the snowplow will pluck them off and they'll shoot them off to the side. Okay, so the only thing that's interesting that I wanted to show this for my class is because, you know, these are like, you know, one of the top, top notch schools and these are top engineers that are there. You can see them. They're, they're always waiting to jump at me and wait for me to make a mistake. And these guys are the new. Now, after my class, then, then, then their mind are sort of then different. But when they come in first in the class, they think engineering runs the world. And they're like, oh, yeah, yeah. So then they say, like, why are we doing this? Why is there an engineering? So I give them the question. The engineering reason is why. Why is it important for the state to have an automated machine and to pluck the, to, to actually go through and invest hundreds of millions of dollars on this infrastructure to make sure that they don't pluck these reflectors off? These reflectors, yeah, okay, they cost $10, maybe $15 at the most. Uh, and if you're in Sacramento, maybe, you know, in front of the governor's house, maybe that's $25. Better reflectors. Oh, it happens here too, yeah. Regular public road. My neighborhood, 20 cents reflectors. But anyway, so, so they put them down and you sit there and go, what? It's only at $25. Why is it so important for the state that's plucking it off? So I asked the engineering students, why? You know, they sit there and go, oh, it's really expensive to, to replace. So, what? Are you kidding? It's only $25. And you need labor anyway, so you've got to put it in. You know, so it's on there. But why? Why recess this? Why, why, why pay someone like me to design a computer to do all of this stuff? Right? And it turns out it's a legal reason. Okay? It has nothing to do with engineering. The problem is these snows go off to the side. Okay? When, you, when you get hit by a, you know, the snow, ah, it's okay. It's like, oh, it's snow blizzard. Ah, this is sort of fun. <laughs> but if all of a sudden you're hit by one of these reflectors, <laughs> that's like retirement budget. <laughs> you hope you get hit. So if you walk to the snow, you see people lining up. <laughs> but anyway, so, so the state doesn't want to get sued. So usually it's a legal reason. And then they go through and they do this automation. Next slide. So here's another form of what Megatronics come about. And then this, of course, something that you don't want to fail. This is a radiation-shaped head. Um, I was talking before about stem, re uh, stem cell research that goes in um, to do the localized chemotherapy so that you can kill cancer cells. Well, the older technology was something like these. Okay, these are, these are about 60 pounds of lead, lead block. These are lead blocks. There's four of them. And what this does is shape the beams. Okay, this piece of head will sit there and the doctor will sit there and say, okay, this cancer shape is about this. It will shape the beam so that it prevents and so that it targets the radiation onto the chemo cells. Okay, and you don't want that beam to be too big or too narrow because you can kill healthy cells. So Megatronics comes out and when the computer comes in, when engineering comes in, is of course you have to be very, very careful <laughs> that these beams are what they say they are. Because again, ah, the legal aspect comes in. You know, but anyway, here is life and death that's involved. So next, next slide. Okay, and then testers, life testers, right? Prosthetics, knee. These are all the equipments that I, that the area of megatronics goes about. You need to know how well when you replace a knee or a prosthetic knee, right? How long that it will last. And this is all sort of this area. Next, next slide. Okay, these are sort of interesting things that start to begin to lead into where we go into nowadays, into microfluidics, uh, into actually individual cells type of research and type of work. This is what's known as an optical tweezer. Okay, and what it turns out is 